All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're back. We're going to be talking about um, dates and times. Um, this is really critical. We might do a couple of videos on this. Um, last time, if you recall, we were doing lots of interesting stuff. We were um, looking at customers, their names. We were <clears throat> talking about the having clause, which we'll come back to uh, doing basic filtering and the where clause, joins, some aggregations, grouping, all the good stuff. This is like, you know, if you can understand this, you'll probably have a good chance of getting your data out, being able to manipulate it. This is like the beginner, the late beginner stage of SQL. If you don't have anybody teaching you, it'll take a little while to get this point on your own. But um, we'll keep doing stuff like this. We're going to start talking about dates, though. Let's work with the, um, the payment table again. So we're just going to uh, select all from payment and uh, just, just refresh our memory here. So... We have a payment date column, and this is a timestamp without a time zone. Um, why don't we start looking at how to just manipulate uh, uh, the date a little bit? So let's, uh, as I like to do here, let's alias it. Let's keep all the columns. Just do p dot star, and again, nothing magical here. We're doing the same exact thing, but we're going to add column, and we're going to do name and date date. All right. <clears throat> and you see that gets you something slightly more friendly if you were going to export this data to Excel uh, or some other analytics tool and, and it didn't know how to understand uh, the timestamp. It probably will. It may not if it, you know, just this is a way to kind of truncate it down to get rid of it. Um, let's say you just wanted to get the year. <clears throat> you could do extract a uh, year from payment date. And let me be proper here and uh, just use my alias in the queries. Um, try to be consistent. If, if you use an alias, then uh, <clears throat> try to use it. And I'm not extracting p dot year. I'm extracting year from p dot payment date. So kudos if you caught me doing that. And here we go. So we've got the, uh, let me just break it out. So we have our original columns, and we're starting to build up some additional columns with, uh, with date information here. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else we can do. If you want to copy it, control D and you might guess that you can get lots of, uh, lots of stuff here. So you can get extract day, month, year. Don't forget your commas. Fire it up. And you can see here, here's, you know, these are just easy ways to kind of deconstruct one field, um, into another. Uh, let's just take a look at what kind of Kind of range we have here. We got 2007. Everything's in 2007 in this test data set. Again, it's a fake DVD rental store. Um, if we wanted to just look at, um, you know, February, for instance, we could say uh, have a where clause, <clears throat> and we can say where the uh, extract month from payment date equals two. That's just February. Remember, we have our good friend the in clause. We could have just January and March, right? So um, that's uh, you know some basics of, of date manipulation here. Now, what you'll probably end up doing a lot is looking at you know maybe purchase amount by month. Um, so <clears throat> let's think about ways to do that. So what do we need? We need the payment date, and we need to sum the amount, right? So Let's um, let's just comment this out real quick. Keep it up there. Command K if you're on a Mac. I forget. Maybe it's Control K on Windows. Um, so we're just going to get uh, we're going to get P dot payment date, and we're going to get the amount from payment. I'm just going to see what that what that's like. And I forgot my alias, and you will do that a lot, especially if it's only one table. Uh, so this is great. Now we've got a date. And we've got our amount. So what we really need, though, is we need to get the uh, we need to get the month. And um, you, here's one way to do it: you do two car um, date. I'm gonna say it's gonna be uh, year 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 month month. Um, then we're gonna just do a sum of the amount. Let's do it the right way, and let's see what happens. 
It's going to get mad. Now remember what group by is. Um, group by means uh, I've got a column that I'm trying to aggregate something for. I'm trying to get the amount for the month. So we got a group by one. <clears throat> there we go. So we use this function. Uh, basically, it converts um, a, you know, a date or a timestamp or, or something to do with time or days to a, uh, a thing with this pattern, year, 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 month, month. And we're summing the, uh, the amount and we're grouping by it. Uh, so this is one interesting example. Um, let's add some more aggregations. Let's just do a max p dot amount. So that's the max. You just do a min. And if you look in Postgres, there are lots of different um, aggregations you could look at. There are probably averages, maybe some statistical uh, things. Now, let me uh, just try to confuse you for a second. Um, let me just move this over here. And this is kind of like for the folks that are just getting started. Why is this going to fail? This is going to fail. Aggregate function is not allowed in the group by. So let's think about this, right? What are my columns? I have amount, 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 and date. These are aggregates, right? We're, we're doing a computation now to columns one through three. So the only column that is groupable is four. So lo and behold, there it is. Now, what if we wanted to, um, to order by, uh, you know, the amount of money spent total, you say order by one descending. Okay, great. So that's, uh, those are some useful ways to uh, work with dates. Um, in the next video, we'll take a look at finding uh, the first date of something. A lot of times you'll have to find the first instance of a date. And uh, we'll use some interesting functions for that.